I do know a lot of doctors that see genetic testing in a way of instilling fear into patients, right? So let's say you have the BRCA snippet, which we yeah. all became familiar with Angelina Jolie and her mastectomy, you know, yeah. as a way of preventing. Whereas I, I've seen, you know, recent studies and research showing it's a 10% increase risk of breast cancer as opposed yeah. to 80 or what it was. The data is always changing. Yeah. But sometimes you can make the case that if you get a, a genetic test back and you see there are these things that are, hey, Brack, I have this wrong, I have this off, you know, you start yeah. to put the fear and the belief that you will get yeah. the disease. And th that the BRCA conversation drives us crazy. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. I literally we were at this conference in Scottsdale about three four weeks ago, and we spoke about this. And women in the audience were literally crying wow. because they have family members who got mastectomies done, who for the, the first time they now heard why do things happen, right? Mm -hmm. So the clinician who says BRCA, red flag, four letter word, cut it off. Ask them why. Mm -hmm. What is this gonna do to me? They don't know. Right? What they know is that there's studies that prove that there's a 10, 20, 80% elevated risk of breast cancer. What is actually going on in biochemistry? That question isn't asked. So what is actually going on? Let's die. That's a perfect example of genetics versus functional genomics. Genetics says, if you have the wrong version of the BRCA gene, you're likely going to get breast cancer, prevent by cutting off your breasts, right? Or whatever, some functional doctor may have more advice than that, but that's typically the advice. So what's actually going on? The BRCA gene is a gene editing gene. It doesn't, it doesn't cause cancer. What it does, it's a, it's a repair tool that goes around trying to fix other broken genes. If it's not working properly, it's not doing its job of fixing other genes. So it doesn't cause cancer. There's something else upstream or downstream that's not working properly, right? Or maybe overworking that isn't being brought back to sort of this homeostasis optimal level because BRCA is not doing its job. Those are the things we, where we need to start asking the questions, what's going on? Because if you could treat that, you can prevent the breast cancer. So I'll give you an example. We talked about hormone dominance. So if you have a woman that is estrogen dominant, meaning in her genetic cascade, she takes progesterone, converts it to testosterone, and then to estrogen, which is what all men and women do. Some women do that a lot faster, more testosterone, more estrogen. So say she's estrogen dominant. She just produces a lot of estrogen. Say in her monthly cycle, she converts that into estrogen uh, toxicity. There's two, four, or 16 hydroxy estrogen. Two is nice and clean, four and 16 are toxic. Some women produce four and 16. So now that's the second layer. Say that same woman is producing either four or 16 and to a high degree because she's estrogen dominant and she doesn't have the, the right detox clearance. So she's not getting rid of that stuff. So it's, it's in the system, right? So during the menstrual cycle, it's not so bad because you clear it every month. There's some residual, you know, but for the most part, you're getting rid of it. This is why most breast cancer we see happens in and around the menopause age. If you really think about it, it's around that time. Because that's the time where that woman that's been producing this toxic metabolite that was most likely on that birth control pill for a long time. As a you know, North American, 85% chance she was taking the birth control pill for a long time, which is more estrogen, more metabolite, right? She may be taking hormone replacement therapy, more estrogen, more hormone metabolite. And at the menopausal age, she no longer has a cycle to get rid of it. So what does the body do with this excess toxicity? It stores it in fatty tissue to keep you safe. Where do women have fatty tissue? In the breasts, right? What starts to happen when you have this high level of toxic insult next to all this, the glands and everything that were never designed to deal with that. And then all the genes go to work trying to do things and your BRCA isn't working properly to help repair and fix it. That's the, your recipe for breast cancer. BRCA was like the last thing, you know, on that. It's like, okay, now that something's truly damaged, I got to go fix it, but I'm lazy and I don't work. So I don't going to fix it. Right. All of this other stuff, it could have been as simple as don't take the birth control pill or take mm. some kind of uh, supplement to help you clear right? Or the right hormone therapy that's reducing your estrogen dominance and estrogen toxicity. That's the actual cause. This was more the band-aid, the BRCA, right? So that when you ask a simple question, well, why does BRCA have this increase? That's the answer. Well, it's one. There's other, there's other answers also. That's one of them. Now, all of a sudden, mastectomy isn't necessarily the only solution, right? 
There's other solutions that are probably going to, they're also going to fix other things. Fibromyalgia, crazy menopause, you know, brain fog, joint pain. This estrogen toxicity leads to so much other stuff, right? So that's the way we think about genetics. Yeah. And why is such a powerful question when it comes to health and medicine that people yeah. just don't ask enough? And yeah. I, I think it's, it's a valid question to ask any practitioner, any doctor is to why do I have this condition? It's not yeah. that I have, everyone's looking for the diagnosis and then it's like, okay, we got the Holy grail of it. We'll just put you on a treatment plan for diagnosis X, but yeah. no one really stops to ask, well, why do I have this? Is yeah. it really my genetic? Is it other things going on? What's going on that led to this? Yeah. And I think that's what you're learning is the why lets you understand a lot more about yourself. And that's exactly what you guys are trying to do. Give you insight to yourself that you didn't have. So you can use that to empower yourself, not to live in fear like many do to say, oh, the BRCA suddenly correlate that with cancer and my life's over, you know, and go into fear. It's BRCA. Okay. I have to do certain things that can empower me. So I won't face that in the future. 